Boa So it's a great pleasure to be here. I always have a lot of fun when I come to Brazil and it's one of my favorite places to go to. So now I'm coming virtually. I want to start by saying that, you know, right now it's, these are difficult times. And I think we should no, make no uh, mistake by skipping the part that is difficult, the survival part, which I think is hitting all of the countries here in Switzerland where I live. It has calmed down a little bit, but there was quite a bit of panic two months ago. And, I, and of course, in Brazil right now, we're looking at, yeah, it's pretty much the peak of things. So uh, I feel with you there and I, I just want to tell you to hang on and do your best and stay safe. Uh, and maybe my speech can help you find some hope in the future. So really what's happening, I think, right now is that our program has become disrupted. Our everyday routine has become disrupted. Uh, the channels are no longer working. Uh, the narrative is changing. And everything that we thought about just a year ago, half a year ago, is different. You know, take my own work. I, I used to fly all over the world, 300 flights a year last year. Crazy. And now I'm sitting here looking at the camera. And our whole business is changing. Everybody's pivoting, right? It's a total reset time. Klaus Schwab uh, from uh, the World Economic Forum talked a lot about this two weeks ago in his event called The Great Reset. I really do think this is The Great Reset. Uh, and there's many great things about it and many very difficult things. What we need to do right now is survive, collaborate, have solidarity, help each other. And these are very human things that are coming to fruition now. But make no mistake about it, the program is changing. We are not going back to normal, and many of us would say that normal wasn't good anyway. Uh, we are going back to a new world. And I'll, I'll tell you about what that entails and what my hunches are. And also I want to say in the beginning that as a futurist, I, I don't really do predictions. Right? My job is to feel what may be coming, to develop intuition, imagination, uh, observation. I think everybody in the futurist community would agree this is really our skill, is to kind of observe and, and learn. So let me start with this statement from Milton Friedman, the economist, the, the, uh, the uh, famous economist, right, who is, uh, in fact, not very often quoted by me, but <laughs> I'm quoting him now. And he says, basically, only a crisis produces real change. And when that change happens, the actions that are coming out of it depend on the ideas that are lying around. So in many ways, you could say the corona crisis is amplifying the good things in us, and it's also amplifying the bad things. Right? So whatever was bad before, it's probably worse now, <laughs> especially in Brazil, I would say, or in the US or many other countries. But you know, we're looking at a really different scenario here to where we can safely say, well, uh, economic growth, right? I mean, the idea of what's happening with economics, you know, we can say, well, we don't know what this crisis entails, you know, will it come back up very quickly? That's not very likely. Will it be an L shape, you know, stay down and, and stay down forever? That's what's going to happen there? And it's, it's pretty safe to say, I think at this point, the future is probably less certain than ever before, right? more uncertain. And we have to live with this. We have to develop the mindset of constant agility and the mindset of being ready for anything. One thing that's happening, and that's really striking, I will fade myself out here again so you can see this, uh, income inequality, general inequality, goes hand in hand with the rate of infections. And there's been a lot of studies on this lately saying, for example, in the US, uh, which I show shortly, is that the more inequality there is in a country, US, UK, Brazil, um, maybe Russia, right? Uh, the more inequality there is, South Africa, right, the more people are suffering from the virus. There's a direct relationship between the two. And so this is a really, really important issue that we tackle inequality. Here you see the U.S. numbers of infections. Uh, basically, it's up and not going down. Policy is a total disaster in the U.S. And here is Brazil, right? There you can safely say it's probably just getting started. This is something we really have to look at. And that requires a lot of thinking about your own actions, 
collective actions and so on. I mean, we're talking about a quite significant change in our lives pretty much across the board. Here's a great message from uh, UN Secretary Antonio Guterres, who talked uh, three weeks ago about what is happening in the sort of dysfunctional system that we may be having here. I do hope you can hear the audio. I'll give it a try. There is uh, an effective uh, dysfunctionality in the way all this is you happening. You can't hear the audio. We have not a know. global <laughs> governance system. Of course, the World Health Organization is the UN Authority on Health. Good. They have issued guidelines, but many of the countries have not respected them, or sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Uh, so the only way out is through effective international cooperation. And I believe the G20 can be the nucleus of that international cooperation, aiming at acting together in an articulated way. But uh, look, I mean, this is not only the COVID-19. If uh, you look at peace and security, I mean, uh, the relationship between the biggest powers have never been as this far. I'll skip the rest of this because it's, you know, it's an important speech. You should look it up on, on YouTube. Uh, but basically he's saying that, you know, it, it is, it is up to us to collaborate to deal with large things like this. And this is not the first one, and it's not going to be the last one. Right? After the COVID virus, there'll be other pandemics, there'll be issues about uh, low, uh, global unemployment, technological unemployment, food, water, security, extraterrestrials, <laughs> you name it, right? Uh, we have to learn how to collaborate. That is really what's happening. And so I came up with this graphic with my team. The graphic shows that we are in the time of great transformation, right? We are in a time of where everything that we know is being shifted. And we have to look at it this way. We're not going to go shift back to what it was before. If you look at the globe again earlier, it was uh, at the bottom of it now, we have airlines, right? The worst business to be in. Cruise ships, pretty much dead. Oil and gas, sinking, right? And at the top of the pyramid, who are the winners? Healthcare, technology, right? Uh, healthcare, all, all across medical services, of course, right? Genetic engineering, government, right? an entire shift in this great transformation. So I always say it's really sort of the great transformation is really in crisis and an opportunity, it's both. And we have to start looking at the opportunity. We have to deal with the crisis and look at the opportunity. I think that's our real challenge. Now I want to get to an important point here. I've been doing this uh, speaking roughly for 20 years, and I'm so happy that in the last couple of years, I found some really amazing women around the world who are joined my team, like La Jacqueline and many others. And we can safely say now in this corona crisis, it's the women, the female leaders, who are showing the way, right? Whether it's in Norway, in New Zealand, in Denmark, in Iceland, in Taiwan, right? It's women and it's younger women, right? And I think this bodes well for the future, but what about Brazil? What's happening with Brazil in that regard? I don't know. I'm, I'm hopeful there'll be something. I'll give you a nice quote here from two women. You should uh, take a look at this. We are at a defining moment for the European Union, but I'm confident. The past weeks have shown that there is a growing awareness of the need to invest together in the European common good and to do this by laying the foundations for the well-being of Europe's next generation. And I always think, where there is a will, there is a way. Yeah, that's Ursula von Leinen from the European Commission, President of the European Commission. Amazing, right, what she's talking about here. Right? To where there is a will, there is a way. I'll give you another great example. This is Jacinda Ardern, Prime Minister of New Zealand. If I could distill it down into one concept that we are pursuing in New Zealand, it is simple and it is this, kindness. Now, this, imagine a man speaking to you about kindness. I mean, I, I try, I do try to do that, but you know, I think this is a really interesting story. Female leaders are taking over. I see the future with women. I see the future with EQ. It doesn't mean that men don't have IQ, you know, I try. But this is clearly where things are going. It's a, it's a really interesting outcome from this whole debate about where this uh, world is going. I also think that we're moving away from this concept of what I call ecosystems. I, I wrote a book, tried to write a book about this 10 years ago. It became part of my other book now. But it's about companies and states that think they can keep stuff to themselves. Right? In many ways, Facebook has become such an ecosystem. <laughs> it's all about them, it's not about us. You know, we're just fodder for their data. Right. And that's, that's the past. It will not work. Right? You cannot solve problems like climate change, food, water, security, 
all of those issues together, it has to be what I call the ecosystem, right? I mean, this is completely obvious. The companies that build strong ecosystems, like, say, Salesforce, right, uh, they're coming out ahead. And of course, technology companies have built both ego and ecosystems, uh, depending on who you look at. But ecosystems are the future, building stuff that hangs together, building empires together where everybody is involved in building a little piece of it. Uh, so take it, for example, Airbnb, which in my view is an ecosystem, uh, versus, say, Salesforce right, or other companies who are trying to help, who are going the extra mile right now to help us make it through the crisis. Right? This is all about ecosystem. If you can rebuild and pivot, build